Hello, this is Alex Case, and this is my review of Super Mario Bros. 3. In the past, I've tried to refrain from playing classic games for review, um, but my criteria for choice has basically been games that were featured in Nintendo Power Magazine, and as I've reached the magazine's third year on my blog, CountZeroOR.WordPress.com, I've started hitting the strategy guide issues, which all focus on one specific game, so I'm going to cover those and do the, continue doing these reviews without skipping a week. Um, I have to start doing reviews for classic games. Oh, poor me. So, in this case, I'm well, Super Mario Bros. 3, and this is the first Mario game I've beaten. Yes, I used an emulator and I used save states, but hey, cut me some slack. I'm on a deadline. I didn't use Game Shark, well, not Game Shark, but Game Genie or Pro Action Replay, or any of the similar cheat devices, or coach for those devices. I just played through it, and it was my skill alone that got me through, plus constantly hitting save state, low state, and so forth and so on. But again, I still was, there's more skill involved than just um, content, just using um, a cheat to const to have unlimited OP leaves or anything like that. So this is, in the past, I've, I've played all three of the NES um, Mario games, and I played them in order, Mario 1, 2, and 3. And I have to say, of the Mario games, in order of preference, they go Super Mario Brothers 1, Super Mario Brothers 3, Super Mario Brothers 2. Um, I like one more just because it's the first one, and I have a bit of emotional value to it, as that's the one I played the heck out of as a kid. I like this one next, so this one really gives the illusion of choice. You can complete each world without having beaten every little course in it. And I like this. I also, I like that you can either choose a route which lets you get around certain war certain stages, or you can even, through the use of the cloud items, uh, skip certain, war um, certain levels entirely. Um, basically, the premise of the game Actually, this time, instead of Mario having to specifically rescue the princess that does come up at the last world, most of the game is spent running around, um, repairing, not repairing, but healing various um, kings who are transformed by the magic of the Koopa Kids, um, who don't make many appearances outside of this game, particularly, in terms of, um, they may show up in later ones, but you won't see, but you don't often see the Koopa Kids showing up necessarily, at least the, these versions of them, in, oh, Super Mario RPG or the Super Mario games. Um, this game also is the first ones to, uh, to, to really trade up the power-ups aside from Fire Flower and, um, and, the Super, and the Super Mushroom and that sort of thing. We had some of that in uh, Super Mario 2, but it's most dramatic here, um, where you have the Tanuki suit, you have the frog suit, you have the raccoon leaf, plus the fire flower. Oh, and you had Hammer Brother from Mario, which is another one where, for the first time where Mario was really able to take on the powers of his, en his enemies, much like in the Kirby games. Um, in general, the gameplay for the game is solid. It's good, solid Mario action. Um, Mario has a bit of inertia to him. Once you start him running, he has to, he has to take a bit, takes a bit of ground to stop him, and that sort of thing. Um, it adds things up a bit by allowing you to charge up your jumps you know, with a little running start meter, and this can use dramatically more range to your jumps than you would otherwise have had, um, which I find is a nice, cha nice thing. And with the use of the raccoon suit and or the tanuki suit, when you fully charge up your jump, you can actually fly for short distances and gain altitude that way. And that allows you to remotely access, remotely access, but access special areas that you couldn't otherwise access, allowing you to do certain secrets. Which leads to my next point: of, because of the, the different suits and the different power-ups and how they affect where you can or cannot go in the game, it also dramatically changes the stages in terms of we have more secret areas now. Before it was just a matter of you hit a few blocks, get a, a vine that come up, you climb the vine and you go collect a whole bunch of, of coins. Now we also have, okay, you can fly up to special areas using the tanuki suit or the raccoon suit. 
You can swim to special areas. Um, you can be immune to fire with the Hammer Brothers suit and access areas that would otherwise be inaccessible. That way, all that sort of thing. It's a nice touch. Um, and the level design really really works off this a bit. It allows you to... Um, it, it has levels where basically you can... Um, well, aside from just what I mentioned about the secrets, you have levels where you can uh, really get the most in level as far as get out of it, get through it more easily through the use of the Tanuki suit or the raccoon suit or the frog suit that's, or that sort of thing as well. It really brings in a bit of the Kirby or even a bit of Mega Man. Um, as much as I'm not the biggest fan of Mega Man because of the hard platforming, it brings up a certain bit of elements of related to the Mega Man games and the special weapons and that sort of thing and how certain weapons make certain levels easier depending on what order you've beaten the Robot Masters in. This also offer, um, this and the ability to store power-ups and that sort of thing, does lead to one little complaint I've had in the game, is that the game sets it up so that certain levels are insanely difficult without certain items. I found that certain, level, certain levels were more reasonable to defeat with the use of the, um, for example, the full power uh, wing slash Tanuki um, raccoon leaf, which lets you just fly long term, or certain levels couldn't really be beaten much, if at all, without the raccoon suit. Um, you just don't have enough running start necessarily, or the raccoon suit gives you more hang time to reach areas that you, to, to make jumps that would have been insanely difficult otherwise. And that, to a certain extent, is partially why it's a lower um, level in my tier than Mario Brothers 1. Mario Brothers 1, there weren't any levels where you thou shalt have the Fire Flower to beat this level, or thou shalt be Super Mario to beat this level, otherwise you can't beat it. Although, to this extent, there was a bit of that, but not necessarily. Uh, the, the, more like the Fire Flower is a big problem there. So, as far as the, the special, special power-up. Um, but, otherwise, the game was decent. They're just decent. It's great. This is a good, solid game. This is definitely one of the best games ever to come out for the NES, and it's one of those games where any gamer really should have in their library through virtual console, through, if you have an SNES, picking up Super Mario All-Stars, this is one of the All-Star standout highlight games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It's earned its reputation justifiably. It's not a situation like where, oh, Mega Man is Mega Man, so therefore it's awesome, and thus you need to get Mega Man 1, even though, in my personal opinion, Mega Man 1 is crap. Yes, I just said Mega Man 1 is crap. But that's beside the point. So, I would recommend, if you find this game at... Uh, not just by picking up on eBay or whatever. If you go to Goodwill or a swap meet or a value village or whatever, and you see a copy of Super Mario Bros. 3, get this game. If you don't have an NES, get this game. And then pick up a used NES or something else from somewhere online. I'll have a, I'll have a Think Geek referral link in the show notes at countzerooror.wordpress.com. You want, you really don't want to buy a brand new NES off eBay or buy and get something newer. Anyway, so otherwise, get this game. You'd be stupid not to. So yeah, this is Alex Case, and you can read more of my stuff at countzerooror.wordpress.com. I look forward to reading your comments here, there, and reading your comments through the video on YouTube. Thank you very much for listening, viewing, and reading. Good day.